talking about the Sanskrit tradition with physicist and Sanskrit scholar Dean Brown. Earlier, Dean, I mentioned what you might even think of as an equation. Atman equals Brahman, which to me is one of the fundamental insights of the Sanskrit tradition. The idea is, I think, the essence within each of us, Atman, is the same as the essence of the whole universe, Brahman. Yes, the biggest thing that you can think of is Brahman. Ever-expanding. It is all the universe and all the many universes, if we have parallel universes, all summed up into one unbounded, expanding everything. And also the supreme deity. And the supreme deity, Brahma. On the other scale, the smallest thing you can think about is your center, and your true self is smaller than any of the parts that go to make it up. It's not your body, it's not your ego, it's not your self-image, it's essential inside of all of those. And the equation of the Veda is Atman equals Brahman. That which is everything is that which is your essence, personally. That seems to be at the heart of all mysticism, really. Yes, I think all other forms of mysticism, all the other tra traditions, all the other cultures arrive at the same point. I think the Vedic is the most uh, extended and most sophisticated version of it, but I think that we're all saying the same thing. It, it's sort of like the E equals MC squared of metaphysics. Ah, it is that and much more, yes. And, and if I understand the Vedic tradition, the Sanskrit tradition, it is out of this insight that, that a whole a science of metaphysics unfolds. Yes, from this point, Atman equals Brahman, we get the whole cosmology of the ancient uh, Indians, the ancient Greeks is derived from it because Greek is a Vedic uh, subculture and Latin, uh, our modern science is derived from it. Mm -hmm. uh, all of that comes uh, in its many forms down to us in, mo in the modern form of Advaita, Vedanta. Vedanta means the fulfillment of the Vedas, Veda means wisdom, and Advaita means not two. That which is the biggest is not different from that which is the smallest. So when we think of Hindu culture, for example, as being polytheistic, uh, and we don't understand this Advaita tradition, we're missing something very important about the way they understand their relationship to their deities. Yes, indeed. The, uh the uh, Vedic uh, tradition, the Vedic wisdom is so extensive that when a person comes to it, he brings himself to it first. So the first thing we find, one finds in the Veda is himself. And his polytheism, as it goes deeper and deeper in it, into it, becomes uh, a monotheism and beyond a monotheism. Even monotheism is not essential enough, not subtle enough to get the idea mm -hmm. that you ultimately find in the Veda. Yeah. Now in Plato we have the notion of the world of ideals. We call it the Platonic world, the world of pure forms. But th this is also oh, found really in, oh, yeah. in the Vedic tradition. See that's in the Veda, that's in Sanskrit, that's called the Ritam Mara Pragyan. Uh, Ritam uh, is where we get our word right. This is right, uh, this is a right angle make a right turn at the corner, uh, let's make it right, let us, let us correct something. Uh, that all goes back to the Sanskrit idea of that which is perfect. Mm -hmm. And everything in the universe, everything that's manifest, is imperfect. So the dynamic of the universe is to f for the imperfect to dynamically approach the perfect. Mm -hmm. And, and the metaphysics, the practical aspect, as I understand it, of the Vedic metaphysics is that through disciplines, through meditation, through centering oneself, we are able to apprehend that Ritambara world, that perfection, and then we 
can bring it into manifestation in our lives. Yes, by keeping your eye on the perfect and letting your feet find the way in nature, we bring about the expression of perfection in the manifest. Mm -hmm. And so the word man, the, the Sanskrit root man, mankind, mind, mental, manifest, manual, are all part of our word human, mean manifest the ideal. Mm -hmm. So the word human combines that sense of Aum, the sound of the universe, with the idea of, uh, of man, manual, manual uh, taking action, using your hands, being here and now in the world. Yes, universe. And the very idea that a human being can comprehend the divine, the, the infinite, is uh, particular in some way to the Sanskrit tradition, I think. Yes, indeed. And, by com and to comprehend the divine, which is to say everything, one comprehends oneself, one's Atman. Mm -hmm. The root to the divine is through the Atman. Mm -hmm. The root to everything that you sense or can sense is through your center. And sometimes we have a sense in the West that spirituality is very otherworldly, sort of separate from our day-to-day -day practical experience, but as, as you explore the Sanskrit tradition, in particular its tantric origins, there is a different sense, a, a, a sense of oneness, of, of our, our sensuality and our spirituality uh, really coming together, as, as you expressed earlier in the very word, devas. Yes, God is approached through nature. Just as in the, uh, the Hebrew Kabbalah, the uh, Ein Sof, uh, the God is approached through the Shekinah, mm -hmm. who is approached through the Malkuth, the, the nature. Mm -hmm. So one gets to God through nature, and one gets to nature through God.